Hello, hello, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to replace a Vauxhall or Opal Corsa crank position sensor. Common symptoms of a failed crank sensor is an uneven lumpy tick over, hard to start the car when it's hot, and the engine cutting out mainly after 10 or 15 minutes driving. Also, your check engine light or fault light will be illuminated on the dash. So you're going to have to read that fault to get the code number to make sure that it is the crank sensor that's fouled. And for this you're going to need an OBD2 scanner. They're quite cheap, you pick them up on eBay. And they plug into a socket here just below the heater controls and the center console. This will give you a fault code number, in this case P0335, and depending on your scanner it might give you a description as well. Crank sensor failure is quite a common fault, so you'll be able to pick up a sender quite easily from your local motor factor store or if not you can get them on eBay and they're quite cheap as well typically I paid 15 pounds and that'll be about 15 euros maybe just a few more dollars it's not an expensive part quite common the sensor is located at the bottom of the engine so you need to safely get your car up on ramps or maybe jack the car up and use axle stands but do not get under the car just on the jack itself to locate the position of the sensor, start in the centre of the car. As you look at the car, follow the exhaust pipe back until you reach the flexible joint. Now just behind the flexible exhaust joint, you will see the drive shaft and the drive shaft rubber boot. Look above the rubber boot and there is the crankshaft position sensor, just in there. Now at this stage you are going to notice there is very little room to work. The good news is the sensor is only held in with one 8mm bolt but please bear in mind you are reaching a point of no return here and if you remove or partially remove the sensor you will not be able to start or run the car so just be comfortable with your abilities at this stage. Now looking at the bolt you'll notice it has one of these awkward star patterns but luckily an 8mm ring spanner will undo it quite easily. Once you've given it half a turn with a spanner you'll find it very easy just to sort of reach in with your fingers and undo the bolt. Once you've taken the bolt out, put it somewhere safe so you don't lose it. Unless it's been replaced before, you're going to find that the sensor might be quite firm in the block. So to get things moving, I gently ease the screwdriver in at the side. And once I've got it moving, then just use the pry bar to ease it all the way out. If it gives you a tough time, you may find a little lubrication spray helps. Now when you pull it out of the block, just be aware that you can see this little brown rubber seal here, this little washer. You want to make sure that this comes out. You don't want this falling into the block itself. Okay, so once the sensor's out of the block, it's fairly easy just to pinch the clip and remove the electrical connector. So here we have the new part side by side. And you'll notice that the bolt holding flange on mine did actually crack off when I was prying it out. Okay, now it's time to put the new sensor back into the block. Now this should slide in quite easily, but just be careful that you don't pinch that little rubber o-ring. Once the sensor is pushed all the way into the block, put your bolt back and just nip it up slightly with the 8mm spanner, but not too tight because remember this is plastic and you don't want to crack that flange. And then simply push on your electrical connector. And that's it, congratulations, you're all done. Well done. Now before you start the car, it's always a good practice to plug your scanner back into the OBD2 port and just check that all the codes are now clear. Depending on what scanner you have, this should automatically switch off the actual engine management lights, but you may have to do it manually. There we go, no more codes stored. Brilliant, all done. So now we can go ahead and start the car and those two warning lights will just disappear. Brilliant, job done. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And as always, I'd like to say cheers and thanks for watching. Bye bye now.